Our next speaker is Scott Emmons, who is in the Department of Computer Science at UC Berkeley. He's advised by Stuart Russell. Uh, and where is Scott? There he is. Take it away, Scott. OK. What is essential for offline reinforcement learning via supervised learning? Today, I'll help answer this question with work done in collaboration with Ben Eisenbach, Ilya Kostrikos, and Sergey Levin. Thank you to the DOE CSGF for their support. Reinforcement learning is a general framework for decision making. It consists of an agent that takes actions in the environment and then receives feedback from the environment in the form of observations or states, as well as rewards. This lets the agent learn, purely from interaction, how the environment works, as well as which outcomes are desirable and undesirable. Often, the reinforcement learning agent is a newborn baby that learns everything from scratch. Here, we focus on an additional constraint known as offline reinforcement learning. In offline reinforcement learning, the agent is not allowed to interact with the environment directly. Instead, the agent must learn from pre-collected experience. For example, you might have a group of scientists who perform expensive real-world experiments. They record their observations in a training data set. We want an agent to be able to learn from this training data without needing to run the expensive experiments or the expensive interaction with the environment itself. This constraint of offline data was particularly interesting at Argonne National Laboratory, where I did my practicum. There, we were interested in the problem of retrosynthetic planning, which is to find a sequence of reactions that can be used to synthesize a target product. In that case, we wanted to learn from existing databases of experiments without needing the learning agent to run or simulate experiments during the learning process. I'll talk about an emerging paradigm for this problem that we coined in our paper, reinforcement learning via supervised learning. It's been proposed in a number of prior works. I'll overview that here. It begins with a replay buffer of experience. This replay buffer contains states, actions, and outcomes. In this illustrative example, we have a lunar lander module which is trying to land between the flags. The outcomes can be arbitrary functions of the trajectory. We consider a goal state, which we coin RVSG, reward to go, which we coin RVSR. You could also use natural language outcomes, among other things. Once you have this training data set, you perform hindsight relabeling in order to create a training data set from the replay buffer. This hindsight relabeling consists of state, outcome, and action tuples. The intuition is that the actions that we see provide supervision from the out for the outcomes that are actually achieved. Once you have this training data set, you can perform standard supervised learning in order to maximize the log probability of the actions. This gives you a conditional policy, which we denote pi, that can take a state and an arbitrary outcome as input. From this, it predicts the action. A key thing here is that the outcome can be arbitrary. So at runtime, you can specify the outcome. The conditional policy will then give the action. Here, I want to provide a bit of motivation for why we're interested in specifically trying to tackle this problem using pure supervised learning. One possible benefit is that it could be more stable than reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is notoriously fickle to train in part because it requires a delicate balance between an actor and an ensemble of critics. It may also be comparatively easy to debug and validate a pure supervised learning approach. We've seen that supervised learning has success learning from large pre-collected data sets, such as ImageNet. We'd like reinforcement learning to be able to do this too. What ingredients are critical? Prior work proposes a diverse and sometimes competing set of hypotheses. One hypothesis in prior work is that you need to carefully reweight the training data. Another hypothesis in prior work is that you should perform iterative online data collection. In a famous paper called Decision Transformer by Chen et al., 
the transformer as the architecture for the function approximator is emphasized. Our work addresses the following key questions. Which ingredients are essential? Which ones do we need and which ones can we do without? How well does RLV supervised learning actually work? We can do it, but should we? What should we condition on? I mentioned a goal state as well as reward to go. Does this question even matter? Our approach is not to propose a new algorithm, but to run a set of experiments in order to answer these questions. We run experiments across four suites, 26 environments, and eight algorithms. We systematically vary parameters, such as the architecture, capacity, regularization, and the conditioning space. Our goal is to distill just the essential elements in order to lead to greater performance, understanding, and simplicity. In the paper, we have many experiments and many results. I'm going to highlight just a few for this talk. Now, as this was an experimental project, all done in simulation, high performance computing was central to the endeavor. In addition to the many suites, environments, and algorithms, we also had five random seeds in all the final experiments in the paper. We had many ablation studies with different policy architectures and distributions. With thousands of experiments to run, we turned to Tasavio, which is the name of the Berkeley Research Cluster. This is managed by Lawrence Berkeley National Labs and available to UC Berkeley students such as myself. This cluster has 470 nodes, 11,000 processor cores, and nearly 450 peak teraflops of performance. For this project, the workload had a balance of CPU and GPU. We used the CPU in order to simulate the environment dynamics we use the GPU in order to run the deep learning. In this case, we were able to do both of these pieces asynchronously. We could do the GPU machine learning first and then do the CPU environment rollouts second. On to the results. Once all the dust settled in terms of our analysis, the final neural network, network architecture that we landed on is shown here. It, ha it starts with concatenating the state in the outcome. Then it passes it through a depth to multilayer perceptron, which consists of two fully connected layers as well as an action. Now, you'll notice that there are fewer moving pieces in this diagram than you would find in a paper such as Decision Transformer, which would have all the intricacies of a transformer architecture. We find that the, that the main keys here are to have a large capacity of your network. In this case, we use width 1024 for the hidden layers. We also use dropout specific to individual environments. We find that we don't need the dropout regularization in other environments. So we've seen what a simple reinforcement learning via supervised learning setup can look like. How well does it actually perform? I'll show performance results for two of the four environment suites that we consider. The first environment suite that we consider is the gym reinforcement learning environment. This has the standard half cheetah, hopper, and walker robots. For the offline version of this problem, there are data sets of varying quality. Some of the offline data sets purely have random data. Other of the offline data sets have expert performance. Some of the offline data has medium performance, which is a policy trained midway between a random and expert policy. This lets us investigate how well algorithms perform when the quality of the underlying data changes. Our first takeaway is that simply using a multilayer perceptron, which is what we do in RVSR, matches the performance of decision transformer in these environments. Our second main takeaway is that doing reinforcement learning through supervised learning is comparable to the TD learning methods, which use the standard Bellman equation from reinforcement learning. However, we noticed that the TD learning methods do have a little bit of an edge. The reason for that is that while these bars are showing aggregate performance over all the data sets, temporal difference learning performs especially well on random data. This suggests that if you're working in a domain where you have low quality data, you might want to consider using temporal difference learning rather than reinforcement learning via supervised learning. The second suite of environments I'll show you is AntMaze. 
In Ant Maze, a quadruped robot must navigate from the start location to the goal location in a maze. The challenge for this offline problem is that many of the trajectories only contain pieces of the full trajectory from the start to the goal location. In order to learn from this data, from these trajectories in particular, an agent would need to generalize by stitching together the parts of the solution that appear in different trajectories in order to get the full solution that goes from the start to the goal. Our hypothesis here was that temporal difference learning, which include the Bellman equation as an explicit method of dynamic programming would lead to better performance than reinforcement learning via supervised learning, which doesn't explicitly have this dynamic programming. To our surprise, reinforcement learning via supervised learning, which is in the first two bars at the top, does perform comparably to the methods that explicitly use the Bellman equation. Our second observation is that conditioning on using goal states, in particular the xy coordinates, of the ant's location in the maze performs better than using just the reward to go as the outcome variable. This highlights the importance of choosing what to condition on when doing this type of training setup. It's an open question exactly why choosing xy coordinates performs better than rewards to go as the neural networks are uninterpretable. Our hypothesis is that providing the xy coordinates as a conditioning variable provides the algorithm with information about a latent structure that we know exists in the environment, in this case, the two-dimensional spatial structure, and that this is helpful for learning. So the takeaways from this project are that you can do offline reinforcement learning via pure supervised learning without reweighting data or transformers and achieve competitive results across a wide variety of tasks. We find that the keys are model capacity, regularization, and the conditioning variable. In our work, we handcrafted the conditioning variable of xy coordinates in the maze. An open question for future work is, could you automate this choice? It would be nice if we didn't need the domain knowledge to program in the xy coordinates, which is in some sense cheating uh, in the standard reinforcement learning setup. We want the algorithm to be able to automatically detect this. So, overall, I will leave you with a video showing the complexity of behavior that you can learn using a simple depth to neural network on offline data. Happy to take questions. <laughs>